You know the hammerhead shark? Obviously you do. The group of sharks named such for the hammer-like nature of their head. Objectively, it looks like some weird alien prehistoric shit that should have been lost to time, but hasn't. And I have some questions about it, the big one. Why? Evolutionarily. At first glance, it doesn't make sense, but it turns out these aren't the only hammerheads that have been found in nature. So today we're gonna try to answer how the f evolution allowed the hammerhead to happen. Let's get the general information out of the way by first figuring out what the fuck I'm actually talking about. The hammer shape has appeared in many different animals for many different reasons and at many different times. Makes sense. It's a very simple shape that eventually took the form as a very simple tool. A tool that humans and our ancestors have been using in its simplest form since like 3.3 million years ago. But of course, that was really just a rock that was used to hammer shit. Didn't have that recognizable hammer shape we know and love today. That came maybe 32,000 years ago. And since then, the hammer as a tool has developed with different materials, different shapes, till eventually the hammer you probably have in your home looks something like this, very avant-garde, all things considered. But when you think of a hammer in its simplest form, strip away the bells and whistles, you probably think of a shape more like a mallet, a sledgehammer. A club hammer, perhaps. Obviously, a hammerhead shark definitely looks more like this than this. So that's the shape I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna get more specific. Cause you can identify hammers everywhere in nature. Exhibit A, that fuck ass prehistoric ungulate that looks like it has a hammer for a nasal horn. Mega serums. And eh, the vibe is kind of there, but it really looks more like a slingshot. And also that's not what I'm talking about. Exhibit B, the hammerhead bat. Definitely has the density and snap shape of a hammer, but I don't want this. I want this. Same thing with the hammerhead bird or the hammer cop. Although its head is literally the same shape as a household hammer, this is not the shape we're talking about. I want this and eyes at the ends, hammerhead shark, etc. I'm also not talking about snails because although you could technically say, eventually a snail's eye socks must go horizontal, but I want fixed hammer, stretched out, eyes, boom, grotesque. What the fuck is up with that? That's the question I'm interested in. What the fuck is up with this? All right, we're gonna start off with the one you're probably most interested in the hammerhead shark. If you clicked on this video more interested in the fly or the Tully monster, you're a freak. And I like that. If you clicked on this video for the shark, understandable, they're sick as fuck. But don't leave once the shark section is over, okay? Stick around, please. All right, hammerhead sharks have been around for millions of I just knocked my, what do they fucking call it? Roomba, my off-brand, put my off-brand Roomba in the worst place possible. Just get out of here, get out of here. Anyway, hammerhead sharks have been around for millions of years. Fossils from the base of this lineage have been found from like 45 million years ago. And genetic studies place the modern hammerheads we know and love today at about 20 million years old. So, old as fuck. Plenty of time to produce a variety of shapes and sizes in the nine species of hammerhead sharks we have left alive today. They get from like three to 18 feet long. And in some species, the width of the hammer can be up to half the length of their body. Like take their body length and then cut it in half and then put it up on the hammer, boom. It's huge. Makes them look weird. Makes them look very strange. That hammer in sharks is called a cephalofoil. Gonna be honest, that name doesn't speak to me at all. I feel like it doesn't represent how badass the hammer looks, but my opinion doesn't matter at all. So I guess I'm just saying that to give you a reason as to why I'm gonna keep calling it the hammer rather than the cephalofoil because hammer is already pretty straightforward. So anyway, the hammers aren't always that thick in the hammerhead sharks. That kind of length is found in wing heads. They can get as narrow as bonnet heads, which are much more dainty, very little bow peep. You might assume that the earlier hammerheads must have looked more like bonnet heads and they got more stretched out over time to the wing heads. But no, it's opposite. Shit was pronounced from the jump. And over time, species diversified into more modest builds. As always, nature never gives shit to you straight. And one shark build I wanna tell you about is Surfshark, another shark that instead of another hammerhead is a VPA, an app and browser extension that lets you virtually migrate across oceans with just a single click, like the mouth of your favorite cartilaginous fish. Surfshark will slash through blocked apps and websites you might not have access to in your region. And they just so happen to be the sponsor of today's video. When I was in Kenya last month, Surfshark ended up being crucial for my time at the airport. I really like Curve Your Enthusiasm. That is my comfort show at the moment. It's on HBO Max. I've probably watched every episode like 12 times. Turns out, even though I downloaded two seasons, HBO Max isn't available in Kenya and I panicked. But then I remembered. Surfshark logged in, quickly switched my location back to the US and boom, Larry David galore. I also used it to get cheaper flight tickets for Gian to come meet me in Namibia. Made my money on the subscription back with a single click. On top of that, Surfshark encrypts your data so no one will be able to see what you're doing, as if you are a shark moving through the deep open ocean. And they have an exclusive deal for you. 
i.e. a viewer of this channel. You can use my code Lindsay to get an extra four free months on your subscription, an absolutely sick deal that you can find at the link in the description. And if you're still a bit hesitant about trying it, Surfshark has a 30 day money back guarantee so you can see what you think. Surfshark is your own hammerhead shark, slashing through virtual restrictions while also keeping you safe and secure. Go check it out. Now, back to the evolution of the hammerhead as well as the diversification of the big hammer itself, which raises the big question. Why the fuck did the hammer evolve in the first place? There are three main ideas, and we're gonna go through each of them. Number one has to do with their sensory system. Sharks as a whole are one of the more famous groups of animals that use electroreception to perceive their environment. They do this by using electroreceptors or electroreception, which is detecting electric fields. Very sick, very badass. And hammerheads, with their wide ass surface area are able to do it much more efficiently because all the electroreceptors get spread out over a wider area. All that room for fucking flat. Basically gives them a broader scan field while hunting prey buried in the sand. The bigger the hammer, the bigger the field. Makes sense. You might be thinking that allows their eyes to be practically useless, which is why they're able to be stretched the fuck out like that. Good electroreception, don't need sight. But no, that's wrong. Despite this filthy setup, it actually gives hammerheads a nearly 360 degree field of vision, something your Latin grandmother can only dream of having. The second idea has to do with prey handling, but this is specific to specific hammerheads. So some species like scalloped hammerheads love to go after stingrays. Turns out a big flat head. It's perfect for shoving a stingray down into the sea floor, pinning it while you go in for a bite. Can't go anywhere if the head holding it down is all flat, spread the fuck out. And the third idea is movement. There's been this idea floating around that the hammer acts like a wing that helps with maneuverability or gives the shark extra lift while swimming. Scientists tested this using fluid dynamics models and the results were mixed. When a hammerhead is swimming straight, the lift from the hammer is not really there. And actually the drag sucks up to 10 times more than normal shark heads. So you're paying a big energy cost to push that flat face through the water. But things get interesting when the shark raises or lowers its head, creates a pressure differential above and below the hammer, which helps the shark pitch its head up or down really fast. Like that, that snap movement is ideal if you're chasing quick fish and other prey. Some researchers also found that the awkward front heavy hammer shape might help prevent banking into turns so the shark stays level, even when whipping around on the sea floor, not smacking your face into sediment. And it turns out inside their heads, they've got these extra muscle groups that most other sharks just don't have. They wrap around the spine, let them raise and lower their heads with force, something other sharks can't do, which is sick. Why exactly the hammer shape evolved in these sharks is a whole mix of these reasons, which becomes even more complex depending on which species you're talking about. Obviously, different species use the hammer in different ways based on the different shapes. Species that go after fast fish or stingrays tend to have bigger, broader hammers. And then those that feed on slower stuff, like benthic creatures at the bottom of the sea floor, tend to have smaller, more compact heads. Unfortunately though, none of them use their heads like we use hammers. Because the thing about the hammer is that it existed on the hammerhead before hammers even existed. So they have it right and we don't. I guess. It's just the way the cookie crumbled. All right, the next hammerhead on the list is a bit more unusual. Matter of fact, it's a complete and total freak. The hammerhead fly. This is one weird bitch. Found throughout the Neotropics, your Central and South America, your Caribbean islands, even your Southern United States. There are three species of hammerhead flies. They belong to the genus Plagiocephalus, which roughly translates to slanted head. That is dead on. This fly is slanted, twisted, and obscene. Hammerhead flies belong to a larger group of flies called the diopsids, stock-eyed flies. Yeah, just look grotesque in general. They have all sorts of sick configurations. When I say sick, in this case, I don't mean cool. Usually I mean cool, but in this case, I mean sick and twisted. This is sick and twisted. So it's not surprising that in their form experimentations, a couple of them went full 180, spread the fuck wide open, hammerhead, stick. One of the hammerhead species can have eye socks five times the length of their body. That is sick and twisted. So what is this? What's up with this? Well, this seems to be a different story than the hammerhead sharks, as you would probably guess. The hammerhead flies and stock-eyed flies in general are not interested in electroreception. Instead, sexual selection. Yeah, the ladies love this shit. Hubba hubba, who's the beefcake? Unlike pretty much all other flies, these stock projections are a male thing. This is just guy stuff, cool guy stuff. Bigger stocks equals more chicks. And when two males meet, they size each other up, spread out their stocks and their front legs to look as massive as possible. And the guy with the smaller stocks usually backs off. That's what she said or will get little man syndrome and try to knock the bigger guy over. But in general, usually backs off if he knows what's good for him. Cause yeah, the ladies like them big and flashy. Pause. Probably cause longer eye stocks means good genes. Building and maintaining these long stocks takes serious energy. So a male who can keep them flashy even when food is scarce is signaling he's a high quality man. 
and stress resistant, which means high quality stress resistant kids probably. Sockeye flies seem to have been around for a long time. There have been some found trapped in amber that dates to about 50 million years old. And the sockeye fly's eye itself is insanely complex. Each eye is covered in about 2000 facets, which are those individual units that make up compound eyes. It's almost three times as many facets as basic fruit flies. They are spherical rather than flat, which gives them excellent multi-directional light gathering. But there is a trade-off. The longer the stalks, the less overlap between the visual fields on the two eyes, reducing binocular vision. Yeah, there's no fucking way this thing can see everything around it. I'm sorry. Also, on top of that, those elongated stalks make flying much more difficult. They can't turn nearly as sharply as short-stalked cousins. Sockeye flies max out at about 860 degrees per second in turning speed, while other flies hit over 2,000. So yeah, sexual selection strikes once again. This is definitely a survival of who gets to bang the most instead of a survival of the fittest scenario. So to recap, we've got hammerheads for better electro reception, hammerheads for better field of vision with a limit, and hammerheads to pick up chicks. Now I wanna to turn to the most mysterious of all, the Tully monster, arguably the weirdest animal to ever exist that we know of. It's actually so weird and twisted that scientists can't even figure out if it's a vertebrate or an invertebrate, or maybe they kind of did, but it has been up in the air for a very long time. That is seemingly some of the most basic shit you can know about an animal, but somehow the Tully monster seems to defy any classification, but you will notice their eyes in a hammer-like formation. And so I want to talk about them again. Maybe you know, maybe you don't, that the Tully monster was actually the topic of my first ever long form video on YouTube, like three years ago. No need to go watch it, because I'm going to give you the rundown now. And I think my presentation style has improved dramatically since then, so I actually don't want you to watch it. I will give you a quick summary here instead, in case you don't know what the fuck this is. Actually, nobody knows what the fuck this is, but you know what I mean. So, the main difference between a vertebrate and an invertebrate is the presence of a backbone, right? Also, things like a rod-like structure called a notochord, gills, those are vertebrate things. And this is what Tully monster fossils look like. Impressions, looks like a soft bodied blob, no backbone. So for a long time, since it was discovered in 1958, scientists were like, invertebrate, duh. Until 2016, when a team used something called synchrotron elemental mapping, they analyzed the chemicals in the fossils by shooting light or radiation at it. They found traces of a notochord, a vertebrate thing, and this shook the scientific community to shit. Since then, several different groups of scientists have analyzed these fossils using all sorts of chemical science equipment, not worth specifying, but all cool and sick, sick as in cool. It's gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And as of 2023, seems to have landed on the vertebrate side of the argument, either true vertebrate or very close relative of vertebrates. But because of all this hubbub, the eyes extending on sideways stalks have only really been analyzed to figure out if specific vertebrate melanosomes could be found in them and prove it's a vertebrate or whatever, which is obviously very important and much more pressing than why sideways? Because how can you ask why sideways if you don't even know what the fuck you're looking at? But now I want to bring up why sideways? And I guess this is not really a question I'm going to be able to fully answer for you. More so a fun little time to think about based on our vertebrate hammerhead and our invertebrate hammerhead, what could be going on with our non-binary debrit hammerhead? Why? Well, field division came up in both before and turns out the Tully monster did have a lens and melanosomes in each eye, which suggests they had pretty good vision. So. Having them stretched out like that probably helped with their field of vision as well. It must have. Why else? But can it be anything else? In both others, the hammerheads seem to have multiple purposes. So this is where I just start making shit up. Maybe sexual selection, like leopard slugs, but in a Tully monster fashion. Maybe two Tully monsters would go like this and then twist their eye stalks together as a mating ritual and then bang. Maybe they smack their eye stalks together as part of their dance to find a mate. Maybe rather than twisting them together, they just Boom. Or maybe they could move them around like snails, but then that just defeats the purpose of me having them in the video because I said snails weren't allowed. So scratch that one. Hmm, what else could it be? Eh, that's all I can really think of. That's my list. So you know what? Come up with your own ideas of why the Tully monster had sideways eye stalks like a hammerhead. And let me know in the comments and make it weird. I want it weird. I want to hear some weird shit, please. Indulge in a little cannabis if you want to make it sick and twisted. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Extinct, where I got a lot of my favorite extinct animals tattooed on me. Like, whatever, cut that. Check out my Patreon for behind the scenes updates and our Discord server. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. But for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!